and it's a beautiful day. Let's make it a good one. All right, young man. Come on now. Have a good day. How are you? I can't complain. How's the family? Liana just got early acceptance to Cornell. You must be so proud. How is your daughter? Ten years old, acting like little Kim. <laughs> mothers of daughters have more gray hairs than mothers of sons. Tell me about it. All you can do is pray. Oh, my word. That didn't sound good. Uh, no. Call 911 now. What do you got? Hit and run. So why you call us? I'm not sure it was an accident. Jacob Lowenstein. Lowenstein? The wife beater? The one who killed his little kid. I saw us coming out photo a month ago. I told you, you know, what's this guy doing around the school? You did the right thing calling us witnesses? Yeah, a big black car, maybe an SUV. Traveling at a high rate of speed. Hit him as he jaywalked across the street. And kept going. That's about it. I'll keep looking. What about Lowenstein? Tore off his leg. I bet he wouldn't make it to the OR. All right, let us know what you come up with, all right? No skid marks, no indication the driver tried not to hit him. Talk about your public service homicide. If he dies. Well, it is rush hour. About a month, someone runs him down. Lawrence Dean's parole got plenty of press. That man beat his wife until she didn't look human and did the same thing to his five-year-old daughter and left her to die. And for that, he winds up doing 15 years. You know, Donald Cragen worked the original case. We'll reach out to him. We thought we'd talk to Lowenstein's PO first and then maybe his ex. Model prisoner. They had to let him out. System sucks. You gotta give him some hope, I suppose. That's what they say. Without the carrot, these guys would be impossible to control. And, you know, they're not all as bad as Lowenstein. Well, that's the point. Someone like Lowenstein short circuits the system. So what were the rules of his release? A curfew, 9 to 7, drug counseling, random drug testing, uh, anger management classes, a 12-step program. Hey, it's all part of a package these days. You, know, you, you got to try something. Anything else? Well, no contact with minors, of course. No contact with his kid. Kid? Yeah, there was a son. He must have been two, three at the time. He's living on Long Island somewhere. Lone Steam was supposed to be staying in a halfway house? For the first six months. You got an address? They, uh, they called me. You lost track of them. What, what am I supposed to do, call the National Guard to find the guy? You know how many cases I got? Do you have a more high-profile parolee than Lowenstein? Why didn't you violate him? Well, I'm going to, aren't I, as soon as I can get to the paperwork. Something tells me that your workload is going to get a lot lighter. Oh. Lowenstein was a coked-out, crazy creep. He used Carla as a punching bag for years. Bruises, broken bones. By the time we got there, her jaw was so swollen she couldn't talk. What about the little girl? She was black, blue, and burned. When I'm having a bad night, this is the one that comes back and haunts me. His P.O. said he had a son? Ezra, two years old, malnourished, neglected, spent most of his time tied to the radiator like a dog. The officer also said that he's living on Long Island. I'll get you a name and address. He was doing well, last I heard. Happy ending, considering. Speaking of happy endings, how's Lowenstein? He's still on the critical list. I hope he lingers a long time in excruciating pain. Have you talked to his ex yet, Carla? We're still looking for her. Her shrink might be able to help you. He can smell weakness, vulnerability, and exploit it, like a hyena stalking a wounded animal. Is that what happened with Carla? Did he sniff her out? I mean, if he came to her door, maybe she might use a knife or a gun to defend herself. But follow him, stalk him, attack him preemptively with a car? No, I wouldn't think so. You sound pretty passionate about this, Doctor. Maybe we should be asking you about your alibi. I'm a lifelong New Yorker, detective. I don't drive. She works in a nursery school. We thought we'd take her right out there, see if she's got an alibi. Her shrink says that we can cross her off the list and move on. I'll do it. If I was still angry enough to want to kill him, it would mean I was still tied to him emotionally. And I can't afford that. Even after what he did to you and your children? You know what I want in life? Not to think about him, not remember him, not talk about him, not hear his name. I don't believe she'd ever go near that man again, not even behind the wheel of a tank. 
Kyle is low in stain. Still critical, but we may be able to talk to him tomorrow. And we did get a location on his son. Yeah, Patch Hawk. Well, this time of day, you're better off taking the tunnel. Excuse me, sir, but where were you the day that Lowenstein got hit? On the Long Island Railroad, on the way into my office in Midtown. Where were you that morning, Ezra? School. You can check with my homeroom teacher. And you have a car? Yeah. We're going to need to look at both of your cars. Do you have any visitors? Uh, his uh, lawyer and his fiance. His fiance? That's what she said. You remember her name? She's down the hall in the lounge. Can we talk to you out here? He gave me this ring when he got out. Spent every dime he had in the world on it. He loves me so much. Uh, Cheryl? Do you know why he was in prison? I was, like, in grammar school when that happened. If it happened. OK, listen. We're going to give you a card if you need anything. What would I need? How did you two meet? Oh, uh, I read an article about him, and then I wrote him a letter. And he wrote back. So I looked him up on the corrections department website. They even had a map and instructions. Must have made visiting day a snap. Yeah, well, we just want to put this all behind us. You know, get married, get on with our lives. Jake's so good with my kids. You, ha you have kids? Yeah, a boy and a girl. <laughs> They've been so happy since he moved in with us. Wait, wait a second. This guy is living with you? He was doing really well, too, and then this happened. <sighs> I feel so guilty. I mean, we lived right around the corner from where he got hit. But why would you feel guilty? Well, the accident? It happened right after he dropped Emily off at school. We talked to Carla's psychiatrist, Dr. Clayberg. Yes, he's well respected. Yeah, he says that guys like Lowenstein were incurable. There is that school of thought. Do you subscribe to that school of thought? If I did, I couldn't continue to do the work that I do. The son, Ezra, his car is clean. What about his father's SUV? Oh, it's clean, too. Hello? His alibi is solid. He was in his office. He had meetings the whole morning. OK. OK, thanks. It was the hospital. Lowenstein? Mm -hmm. He wants to talk to us. Somebody did this deliberately? What the hell? Why would somebody want to hurt me? You're kidding, right? Witnesses say they heard a car accelerating before and after it hit you. What do you remember about that morning? I dropped Emily off of school. And then I was walking to the corner to get a paper. And next thing I know, I wake up here. And I'm missing my leg. My leg, for God's sake. Did, uh, did you see the car that hit you, sir? I, I don't remember anything after I dropped her off. You ain't given us that much to work with. I'm giving you what I got. So, you find the scumbag who ran me over. We're looking. Not looking too hard, are you? Can't believe I was safe inside. How did you manage that? To stay safe on the inside? Guys like you, child killers, molesters. I never killed anybody. They get taken apart in the joint. I got a law degree, and I did legal work for the other inmates. Thanks. Joyce Draper drives a 2002 Ford Explorer SUV. Fits what the crime lab said. What if Lowenstein was her pet project? And what if, for some reason, she decided that this was never going to work? He was never going to change. Like Dr. Clayberg said. Right. And remember what he said? He said that a woman like Carlo would not have the moxie to kill Lowenstein preemptively. But Joyce Draper would. Brother, would she? With plenty of moxie left over. We need to look into her car. Hello? Hospital? Lowenstein just took a turn for the worst. Well, I hope he doesn't sell out before we get the chance to talk to him about his favorite shrink. OK, we'll be right there. Thanks. Pulmonary embolus. I guarantee you she's the only person in this world that will ever shed a tear over this guy. <laughs>